Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to show you how to use iron-on with wood. This was really popular a few years ago and it's starting to come back round again and we are doing, um, we've just done an event on this in the group. So I thought I would show you how we do it. So I've just got an image here, this is from Design Space. If we go to images and we select category up here, we can go to image sets and we're just going to search for world of hearts. These were so popular last year and they're going to be very popular again this year, I think. And there's three really lovely sets there. So there's this one, which has got all your rainbows um, and different animals and things. We've got this one here with lots of images involved in each heart. And then there's this one as well. So I've chosen this one. This grey box is just the size of my wood blank and it's literally just there so that I can size this up. So I'm going to bring that down a bit. And then I can get rid of that because I don't need it. We can then go to make it. And because we're using iron on, we do need to remember that we're going to have to mirror each of our mats. You must make sure that you mirror with iron on unless it tells you otherwise. And really the only time it will tell you otherwise if, it, if it's a printable, um, so it could be a printable dark, most commonly, they don't need um, mirroring, but always check the instructions. And if it's been a printable patterned vinyl that you have bought, you will need to read the instructions for that. But most iron-ons, you will need to mirror. So I like to just check that they're all mirrored, and then we can go to make it. I'm using my makeup, but you can do this on any of the machines. So the Explores, that includes the Airs and of course the Joy as well. And I'm going to be using different types of iron-on. So of course, I'm going to choose the right cut on each of my mats. Make sure if you are going to change your material, so you're going to do a glitter and then maybe a foil iron-on, that you do go in and change the cut settings as well. So I've got some Cricut Red Glitter Iron-On, Cricut Green Foil Iron-On, Cricut Gold Holographic Sparkle Iron-On, some Cricut Blue Glitter Iron-On, and some Cricut Everyday Iron-On in Purple. So not only do we need to mirror our iron-on in design space, we also need to put it shiny side down onto our mat. So usually, if it was vinyl, we'd have it shiny side up and you can see that carrier sheet there. With iron-on, you always want to make sure you put it down onto your mat. And you can tell the difference, A, because you've got a shiny side and a matte side, but also the feel. So the shiny side is nice and smooth and quite slippery and the back is normally like a waxy feel. Always make sure you use your brayer or a scraper to secure it to your mat.
what happened to my footage, but something happened anyway, so I'm not able to show you me making after this point. But I have put together a quick knockout just to show you how you iron on onto wood. Your most valuable item at this point is the Cricut Easy Press Heat Reference Guide. This is fantastic. So you can find this at www cricut.com forward slash heat guide. This is invaluable to you when you're doing any iron on. So I'm using an easy press two and I'm using glitter iron on and I am putting it onto wood. Now it's important to say at this point that these times are going to be dependent on the wood you've got. If it's got a varnish on it, if it's been waxed, if it's got paint on it, the type of wood it is, you may find you need to play with your um, timings and temperatures a little bit. I'm just going to put easy press mat and apply and it will tell me I need 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 seconds. Now in my previous um, make I actually had foil and if we select wood you'll see that foil is not compatible with wood. However, I've done it plenty of times where I've had foil iron on on wood and I've never had a problem. So I personally do do it, but I just want you to be very aware that Cricut do not recommend foil iron on onto wood. As I say, I've never had any problems. That doesn't mean I won't ever encounter any problems. And it doesn't mean that you won't encounter any problems, but I do need to make that very, very clear. So the first thing we're going to want is a easy press mat. And then I've got some wood here. This is from Made by Tree, which is my favorite place to go for my wood. And I've got two lots of glitter iron on. I've just done a quick knockout. So I've got my easy press here. I'm just gonna switch it on. It's at three, it's already set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, but just to show you, if you need to change the temperature, just click the temperature button and you can go up or down. Equally, I like it on Fahrenheit, but if you want it in centigrade, just press that temperature button down and it will change from Fahrenheit to centigrade. And then if you want to get it back, you just press it down again and it'll go back to Fahrenheit. It's currently set to 45 seconds. I need it at 40 seconds. So again, if I click the little timer button, I can either go up or down. You're also going to want a Teflon sheet because we're using wood and this wood has been painted. First of all, even though I've got my carrier sheet on my iron on, I do want to use a Teflon sheet. A, because I want to protect my wood from the plate of my easy press and B, I want to protect the plate of my easy press from my wood. The other thing to note is that if you've got any knots or anything, when it's heated up, you can actually have sap come through and that will taint your easy press plate. So make sure you put a Teflon sheet down so that any sap or anything that seeps through goes onto the Teflon sheet. So I'm gonna place my iron on down and then I'm going to put my Teflon sheet over. So I'm going to come in with my easy press. I'm gonna do this side first. I'm gonna press down with a good pressure. I'm not having to lift myself up or exert myself terribly, but you do want a good firm pressure on there, especially for the glitter iron on. The easy press reference guide will tell you the pressure you need and it will also tell you whether you're doing a hot peel or a cool peel. We are doing a cool peel on these. That is something I find makes a huge, huge difference. I know I myself am super impatient. Having to wait for iron on to cool down can be painful at times, but if you don't, you won't get a proper stick. So always follow the reference guide. I'm then going to do this side. So I like to come in with my XL scraper whilst it's cooling down and I find this just helps it to really get that stick to the wood. And I know this hasn't gone on straight, it's not a problem. I'm only doing this very quickly because my other footage somehow got lost. 
think my SD card got corrupted. I need to order a couple of new ones. So I'm not overly concerned about this. It's more about showing you the technique at this point. Once it's cooled, we can come in and just start peeling that back. I can then put my next layer over. Again, make sure I put my Teflon sheet on there. And again, I'm gonna do both sides just to make sure that the other layer is nice and secure as well. I like to come in with my scraper just to make sure that that really does get worked into the wood. And there we go. Not perfect, I know, but I didn't want it to be. I just wanted to show you what you can achieve with iron on onto wood. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions or queries, please do let me know. Make sure you subscribe, you hit that like button and the notification bell to be alerted of when I upload a new video. As always, thank you so much and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.